including Cassius Eiffel TV, MTK Global. We're in uh, Birmingham here today. I'm joined by Sam Eggington, who's in action tomorrow night yeah. against Hassan Mawakino. Don't ask me. I don't have a clue. <laughs> I don't have a clue. <laughs> I wonder if John Big can uh, pronounce his name. Clue. John's been calling him Hassan all week. We'll call him Hassan. Yeah, Hassan. Absolutely. Um, yeah, what do you know about him? I don't. You don't? I, I didn't know his first name till probably Wednesday, so... I don't, obviously, you know, I don't watch, I don't, I don't look their box record, but I don't, I just go what I'm told and, and go from that. Mm. I mean, we know obviously you've got a job to do tomorrow night and you're fully focused, the team's fully focused on that. But obviously, it's kind of been leaked out that there's a potential fight for you with Brandon Rios in the pipeline. And yeah. I was asking Eddie Earn about it earlier on and he didn't really want to dwell too much on it and whether it kind of that is going to be the case for that uh, card soon. But... It's, di it's a difficult one because you've got a job in hand to do yeah. tomorrow night before you can even look at whoever else it may be after. Yeah, like I say, a lot of things have been spoke about. Um, obviously, like I say, I've got, I got, I got a fight to deal with. Um, whether it looks easy or not, you know, minor cuts, scrapes, anything can can, can turn things around. So, um, like, it's just, it is what it is at the moment. You know, I've got a fight Saturday and we'll deal with that and then pass that come back to me um, and we'll have a better chat about it yeah I think that's probably Other the best stuff, thing yeah. <laughs> best thing to do like I said and Eddie Hearn ain't obviously shy of a few words but when he was kind of reluctant to talk yeah, about it I thought sort of, like, if yeah. you said the opposite then I would have probably given you more yeah but you just pretty much told me not to say anything so I'm not going to say anything no he was talking for about 20 minutes about it actually Sam so no I'm only joking um, okay so I mean, wh where do you see yourself kind of where are you in your career at the moment um, I'm at the point where I I take every opportunity as it comes and and see what I can do. Uh, I got I got I got nothing to lose. I'm I'm 24. I'm you know I'm, I'm climbing the rankings. I'm pretty high up. From what I heard, I'm I'm in the top 10 in box right? So I mean I know that's not a governing body, but you know it's it's a good it's a good place to be. Mm. Um, I just got to keep winning and, and see what comes up. It, it's incredible that you say you're only 24 because it seems like you've been on the scene forever. Yeah. Um, I think that's because that's of the... It, feels like it, well. must, it must do. Um, it feels like you have been around longer than kind of that sort of time span because you've been in a lot of good fights, you've been in a lot of hard fights, yeah. you've been in with very good opposition, so... And like I say, when, I say, when you say where you feel like you are in your career now, and I say, you know, I'm at a point where I take my opportunities as they come, um, that's been all my career so it's not changed it's just that's just what I do I mean you know they ring me up they often give me a, a, a fight a, a name a fight date and a weight and I've never turned down ever I've mm. never tried to um, change the weight of a fight the date of a fight um, change the fighter I've just sort of said give me the, give me the details and we've, we've done it so everything I've been asked of I've done um, and I, I feel like now I'm going to start getting the opportunities that, you know, the big opportunities um, that will help me buy my house and my cars and my Rolexes. Well, that's one thing I know Eddie Hearn's always said. He wants to kind of see fighters kind of secure their futures financially, yeah. you know, by owning their own houses and, you know, he, he wants to kind of, because that all leads to really what you've done in your career, you know, yeah. if you've kind of earn that kind of money to be able to do that. He's always said that that's very important. We can kind of see that, definitely. You know, I know it's about titles and glory, yeah, but yeah. ultimately you are kind of trying to secure a, a financially a future for your family. Yeah, exactly. And, that, and that's been the plan from the start. Like Everyone knows that I turned over to be a journeyman. But um, when I turned professional, even to be a journeyman, that plan was always to, to try and get a house. Because I've always thought, you know, you buy your own house in any way. Um, and you ain't lost. Mm. So that's always been the plan from when I was a, like when I tried to be a journeyman to to now. So you know that's always been the goal. And when I when I when I reach that, you know everyone I know because I'm gonna have a, a fat party. <laughs> so I like that. I mean, one thing like us as fight fans obviously know with you is that it doesn't matter who you're in against. We know yeah. we're gonna watch a great fight, and it yeah. might take its toll on you because you're usually in like a brutal fight and a, a war as such but as fight fans I suppose 
us watching that kind of appreciate that that's the kind of fighter you are. And so it's what I do it for. I mean, like I say, I've, I, brutal fights, you know, going toe to toe, and you know, it's, it's meat and drink for me. That's the sort of fights I enjoy. They're the sort of fights I can get up for. Knowing that someone's gonna come and try and pop jab me and do a run at is, is it irritates me through camp, if I'm honest. So, um, you know, I enjoy that, and I know it looks like it takes its toll on you and so on, but when you're in camp and you know that's coming, it, it helps me through camp. So, you know, I, I enjoy that, and you know, the more fights like that, the better. Hmm. I mean, overall for you, I mean, we're not even looking at kind of you're 24 years old, so have a long you've got left in this sport is kind of down to you because you're yeah. you're not uh, even remotely near an old age to even consider retiring but you know is the end goal for you that you want to kind of come out of the sport with a with a world title yeah I mean yeah definitely it is now because you know I've won the European I've won the British I've won the Commonwealth um, th- if, I, if I weren't here to win a world title now it seems pointless I can earn money every, anywhere um, I can get a job, blah, blah, blah. I know it's not, you know, what people think, but I've got to have some sort of goal. Money can't be the only, um, you know, thing that I'm doing it for because, you know, that's something mad in the end because I'd, I'd never stop. So I've got to have something to aim for. So if I get to that at any point, if I get to it in a year's time or two years' time, I've got to have a point where I say, look, I've done this now and I need to stop. If I'm doing it for the money, then that will never stop. Hmm. Yeah, just keep coming and I'll keep boxing until I'm old and, and broke down. Have, I mean, have you and Eddie Hearn kind of discussed world title opportunities in the next sort of um, nah, year I mean, or so, whether if they came up? No, nah, not really. I mean, no. the, the um, Super World is quite tied up. You know, Hearn's got three of the belts. Mm. Um, Jamie, what's his name? Jamie Mungo has just won one. Yeah. Um, and then Charles got the other in it. Mm. So it's pretty tied up um, until you know someone goes up, vacates. You know they're going to be tied up for a while. And like I said earlier, I'm ranked in box rec, but I'm not high in any other body. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, I wasn't literally talking for now, but you know, over the next sort of 12, 18 months, is that kind of um, I mean, it's not a plan? Way, but I think it's pretty obvious. If one comes up, we're taking it, no doubt. Yeah. No doubt. I mean, no matter where it is, um, yeah, we'll take it. But obviously before then, you, like I said, you've got that job to do tomorrow night and then like I said, a, a potential fight there after you, after that for you. So I know you want to speak about that more. Um, yeah, give me a shout tomorrow. <laughs> Fingers crossed with no cuts and bruises. Um, and this kid don't, you know, lay me out, maybe. Um, give me a shout and we'll talk more. But until then, you know, I've got, I've got nothing to say. Um, no comment it's not a problem Sam thank you very much for talking to Eiffel TV wish you the best of luck tomorrow night and um, yeah we'll catch up with you after your fight thanks a lot good luck cheers